Hello everyone and welcome to our first intuition painting. Small paintings where I follow nothing but my intuition and I encourage you to do the same. Today we're going to paint these vintage flowers and I am starting with a 6 by 6 inch sheet of Frederick's canvas that I've mounted on a foam core. I did gesso it with black gesso but whatever you prefer there is perfectly fine. I'm using a colored pencil to just loosely outline where I want these flowers. You can use any kind of pencil. The rule for these intuition paintings is if your question is can I use this, the answer is try it. So if you don't have a colored pencil and all you have is a regular pencil, use a regular pencil. I'm just kind of scribbling around on here exploring the canvas and the composition trying to figure out where I might want these flowers and in doing so in really just kind of scumbling around I'm leaving myself a lot of options and notice I chose a really dark pencil which is going to be very very easy for me to cover up later on so I don't have to feel you know kind of pigeonholed into keeping a line simply because I put it there and I can't cover it up later because it's too light. Now I'm going to go to my half inch flat and part of these intuition paintings is that I am going to be using colors that you know I just automatically think oh I wonder if that color would be good and a lot of them are probably colors that we haven't used before. So I want you to feel free to do the same thing. Use colors that strike you, colors that you have. On this one, I am using Permanent Maroon by Goldham, Payne's Gray, and Buff. I just kind of loosely mix those into a dark mixture, holding my brush at the very end of the handle and turning it a little bit. I'm finding those petal edges. Notice I'm being super loose. And twisting my brush like that helps me keep my brush strokes nice and loose. I know right now it just looks like some weird dark pink worms, but as we go and the layers build, we can start defining those more. So just like with the pencil, I'm just kind of exploring that and figuring out where I want, might want each flower. This dark color is going to be very easy to cover up should I decide, oh, I really hate that petal or that's in the wrong place or it's the wrong shape or size. So I'm not stuck with anything. Notice I'm also kind of scribbling out the corners. It just, it felt like it was a little tight in some of those corners. I felt like I was tightening up and trying to make shapes that were too specific and that felt awkward in the corners. So that's why I started scribbling out there and you'll see me doing that quite a bit as we go. Now, these paintings, they're all gonna be kind of little size and they're gonna be paintings that I haven't really put a lot of thought into. Maybe sat down with a little bit of an idea, but I'm fleshing out the idea on the canvas as you're watching. So after the video, make sure you check out my blog. I am gonna have a blog post on each one of the paintings as they air. And I'll have a little bit of extra information for you in that blog post, as well as a bit of a critique on my own painting, tell you what things I do and don't like and what I might change if I did it again. And hopefully that's helpful for you to see that you don't have to feel like your painting is great at the end of an intuition kind of painting episode. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing here. I just lightened the color a little bit and I'm still just defining where those edges, where those petals are going to be. One thing that you'll see different here from the last color is as I go, I'm softening an edge here and there and leaving other edges much crisper, more distinct. So you want to have, for successful flowers, I think, you want to have a combination of hard and soft edges. So you can think of the crisp 
outer, you can think of the, the crisp hard edge as the outer edge of the petal. You can think of kind of the softer edges as being the inside of the petal as the petal moves toward the center of the flower. And so you don't want to have just a bunch of hard edges because it's just going to look like a bunch of worms. You don't want to have a bunch of soft edges because it's going to just be a big blur. So as we add the layers, you'll see that I start to define the hard and soft edges much more deliberately. Right now, I'm just kind of letting them happen. A little bit of a lighter color, but I am starting to see where I want some, some softer and some harder edges. So I'm kind of doing that a bit more intentionally here. Notice how I'm twisting that brush. I know that the brush twisting is kind of challenging for some of you. Some, some of you have a hard time with that. I think what I've noticed it is when people are having a hard time with the, the brush twisting is they're twisting the brush, but they're also trying to force the brush to do something specific. Go in a straight line, make this particular shape. The point of twisting the brush is to take that control away from you. You can't both control and not control the brush. So twist the brush and let it make whatever shape it's going to make. That's the point of twisting it. Don't try to control it because that's when you struggle with it. Another one of my goals with these intuition paintings, one of my goals for you guys is to help you learn how to tap into your own intuition. You know, you can only learn so much from watching a tutorial and being told, now do this, now do this. I mean, you, you learn how to follow instructions really, <laughs> really well. But I want you to also learn how to follow your own instructions, how to listen to yourself. Now I'm moving on to my Fuzzbird, just a, a small, a smaller brush. I like to use puffy old brushes because they take a little control away from me and I don't tighten up as much. Now, as I was painting this, my intuition kind of said, hey, put some Naples yellow in there. Let's kind of brown down those petal edges. But ultimately I don't feel like like I really went with that. It didn't show a lot. So, you know, it's definitely not required. Nothing's required, but I think you'll see that warmth there in that color I just laid down does not follow through to the end of the painting, but it's something I still had to try and I'm glad I did, even though it didn't actually become part of the painting. So I want to teach you guys techniques and you know, the, the whys and the hows of the techniques so that you, you understand more about creating the painting than just, I don't know, she told me to put this color here. So I put that color there. I want you to be able to take the techniques and go to another painting and think, oh, this technique that I learned over here, this might work for this. So for example, the technique that I'm using right now with both of these brushes, you know, kind of twisting it so I've got a, a crisp and a soft edge, this is the exact same technique that I used on the ghost that we painted a few weeks ago. The exact same. So in that video when I said, I don't want you to focus so much on learning how to paint a ghost or painting or learning how to paint a flower, I want you to learn the techniques and understand how to do them because then you'll be able to, you know, when you go on to another painting, hey, that technique is probably gonna work here. So this kind of twirling, glazing type technique is exactly the same one I used on the ghost. And you can use this same technique to paint clouds or flowers, obviously, or, hair or you know a million other things tree bark wood grain it's 
So the paintings that we're going to be doing are really a, a means to an end to get the techniques across to you. Another thing that's really important with kind of painting by your intuition is being very, de very gentle with yourself. I do not want you going into any painting, whether it's one you're doing with me or one you're doing off the top of your head or whatever. I do not want you going into it with these pressure and expectations on you. You know, I've got to make this painting that looks like these flowers and I have to get it to look as close to Jane's as possible. No, <laughs> not at all. I would just want you to enjoy it and see what you learn. So that's part of the reason that on my blog, I'm going to be doing a little mini critique of my own painting to show you that when I'm done painting like this, I may not, I may not even like the painting that I did, but I saw it through to the end. And at that point I can decide, okay, I like this. I like this. I like this, but I need to work on this, this, and this. So almost consider these paintings your your practice. It's just kind of a first shot. If it's horrible, it doesn't matter. Take the lessons you learned, move on and do another one that you like even better. And like me, you're gonna get to a point like this right now where you think this looks really awful <laughs> and you might be tempted to throw in the towel because it just looks like a canvas full of pink and purple worms, but do not throw in the towel. If it already looks bad, it can't get any worse. Keep going and see what you learn. Now I'm mixing up a dark color with just my maroon and Payne's gray and a lot of matte medium to start doing some glazing. Now my intuition said, hey, just get in there and glaze this in the darks. We'll get rid of those pencil lines and start to create some shadow in the flowers. But as I went, I felt like it was way too tight. I was really tightening up and I did not want to tighten up. One of my personal goals in painting this year especially is to really loosen up. If I find that I'm painting really tight, I scribble or I get my fingers in there like that and start wiping. I, I really wanna loosen up. So as I go here with this glaze color, you're going to start seeing that I really end up scribbling it over, I believe just about the entire canvas. Always using the matte medium so that it's nice and transparent. I don't want to lose anything that I just did, but I just want to kind of homogenize everything, kind of bring it all into, you know, the, the same canvas. So it, Again, doesn't look like pink worms on a black canvas. It looks like flower petals starting to emerge out of a dark, you know, a dimly lit room or something. Also, when you go to check out the blog post for this and the other intuition paintings, make sure you check out my custom paintbrushes if you need a set. They are available on my website, as well as my book, Shadows on the Page, and the paintings for these videos will also be available on my website. And I'll probably have a few other of my original paintings on there as well. So basically just check out my website. There's a lot of cool stuff there. See, done trying to force it into those dark areas. Let's just scribble it over the whole canvas. Just picked up some matte medium to help spread it around and see how that just m kind of forces it down and makes it look shadowed. Brings everything together a little bit more. Glazing is really magic. If you've never done any glazing, you really should try it. I 
one other thing I started noticing while I was glazing here, especially was I had started working the glaze around the outer edge of the canvas and it kind of created, started creating this spotlight effect on this lower left flower. And I really was into that. I really liked that. And so my intuition said, Hey, let's keep that going. Let's keep these outer edges really dark and really punch the light in that lower left flower. So that's what you're going to see me start to work on now. That's what I mean by intuition. It doesn't matter if you're painting from a tutorial or an image, anything. If you look at your painting and you think, Ooh, maybe I should do that. Or I really like that then follow it, chase it and do that. Going to my number three round now and just mixing up a lighter color than what I've got on my canvas right now. And I'm going to do pretty much the exact same brush stroke just with a smaller brush. So I'm going to be able to put a little bit more focus on where these edges are. I'm going to be much more deliberate here. That wasn't quite light enough. So more of the buff. And I'm spinning this brush too, just like the other ones. It gives me nice crinkly little edges for the flower petals. And I blur out one side of that line. And I leave the other edge nice and crisp. Part of listening to your intuition is not being attached to an outcome. So and I may have already said this when you sit down to do this painting or any other painting, it's okay to go to it with an idea, but I try not to be too attached to that idea. So a lot of times I'll think, and you'll see that as we go, there's several paintings where, you know, I start, okay, I'm going to have, this and it can be something as basic as a sunset and I have no other ideas because I'm not attached to an outcome and I find that when I'm not attached to an outcome I open myself up to be a little bit freer and kind of experiment a little bit more and there's less room for disappointment right if I sat down to have a very specific idea of how I wanted these flowers to look then I might be disappointed if that didn't happen or I, I for sure wouldn't be listening to my intuition as much, right? If my intuition said, Hey, make this area right here, nice and bright and the rest of it nice and dark. Well, if that clashed with my original idea, I would either not listen to it or I'd try and find a way to force it into the idea that I came to the table with and they might not work well together. So that's what I mean by not being attached to an idea. And I certainly don't mean to imply that you should never be attached to an idea, but this is playtime. This is learning time. This is growth time. And in those times, we just want to see what can I do? How far can I take it? What will happen if it's, that's what this is about. And see how I'm starting to get those kind of lettucey, almost lacy type edges to these petals. And that's what I was just really enjoying right here was creating those little ribbony edges. This is the same color, but as I start working out from that main flower, I'm adding a lot more matte medium to it so that while it's the same color, it's much more transparent, which starts to give the illusion that the flowers might all be the same color, but some of them are in shadow. 
for me, that's an easier way to think about it than just mixing up a darker color. And if the color is too light, ultimately, I can glaze it over again and I will do a little more glazing. Another thing for me that was really important in this painting was not worrying about what petal belongs to what flower or, you know, trying to make sense of each petal. This petal is attached here and it's moving this way or that way. If, the, if it's a big grouping of several flowers that are all maybe starting to wilt a little, they kind of assimilate into each other, right? You might have outer petals of two flowers kind of get tangled together and 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 kind of folded into each other so don't try so hard to make these complete distinct shapes that are absolutely separate from each other just let things happen the way they're going to happen and i think that in my final painting i just really have a suggestion of three or four distinct flowers really it's just kind of suggested by the fact that there are a couple of areas with some smaller petals that could be interpreted as the centers just scrubbing a little bit of that lighter color into the corners to again just kind of suggest that there's flowers there but I don't want to put a lot of time and detail into that I'm just going to glaze it out very very transparent there if you can tell blur it out But then I'm also going to kind of scumble it out a bit. Like I said, when I notice that I'm starting to tighten up, I have no problem scrubbing on my canvas. Just do a little scribble. It helps me remind myself to loosen up a little bit. And it helps my painting not quite look so tight. That's my main goal for myself this year is to just work on loosening up not working so tight. And like I mentioned, every time I use colors outside of, you know, kind of the normal palette that I typically use I get so many questions what if I don't have this color what if I don't have this can I do this all of the answers are use whatever you have <laughs> use whatever you like I, you know I'm I'm next to never gonna say oh yeah use this color well what if you don't have that color and you don't have access to it or what if you don't like that color you know there's a million and one ways to do anything absolutely anything so what I want for you to do is do some color tests and find out what colors do you like what colors give the look that you want what colors work well together it's really hard for me to say oh if you don't have permanent maroon use this color or that color I don't know what other colors you're going to be using and maybe the color I just suggested won't look great with those other colors or you know so I want you to do color tests and figure out what works based on what you have and I think I'll probably do a blog post on how I do color tests uh, very soon so keep an eye out for that I'll have that on my blog I may have a little like little sample clips of it on my Instagram or Facebook or something. So I'll figure that out and I'll get that information out to you guys. But color tests are super important. Don't rely on somebody else to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. 
Follow your intuition. Decide for yourself. I don't have that color. Okay, let's figure it out. What color am I going to use based on what I have? Because you certainly don't need to run out and (laughs) buy every single color that I use. I buy a lot of paint colors because I'm kind of a magpie. Ooh, that's a pretty color. I think I'll buy that. And so I have a lot of colors that I might use it in one video and then never again. And you don't need to go buy every single color I have. You go broke. I go broke doing it. So I want you to learn how to choose colors for yourself. So we will do a little bit of a a focus on that as well. At this point, I'm really starting to see the flowers come to life and I'm getting really excited about it, especially since I pulled it back from that really horrible pink worm phase. And if I had given up at that pink worm phase, I would have missed out on this. And I'm really happy with where this is going right now. A little scumbling in that corner. Remember this, all of this color has a lot of matte medium in it, so it's nice and transparent. Let's even go lighter. There's just a little pink on my brush. I'm mostly getting buff or unbleached titanium. So this is the lightest color that I've used so far, and I'm really going to start concentrating it in the area where I decided I wanted to kind of spotlight that flower. I'm not going to put it on every edge, on every petal, just on the areas that I really want to make kind of pop. And just like the last color, as I move out from this central flower and I put some of it on the flowers around it, I'm going to put a lot more matte medium in it to really make it transparent and thin it down. just created a little petal in there that I didn't have before. I'm actually going to do that in a few different places. I'm going to start adding petals where I didn't have them. You can absolutely do that. Here comes another one. There was no petal there, but now there is. Notice I made that petal uh, kind of fold a little bit, just based on where I put the hard edge. I put the hard edge on the left at the top and the hard edge at the right on the bottom, and that kind of makes the flower petal fold over itself. So really experiment with that and see, you know, what kind of directions you can make your petals move. It, It might take you a little bit of practice to you know, be able to see that in your head or know how to move the line from one side to the next to get the look you want. But if you see your painting through to the end and you focus on doing that, you will learn it. But if you do it a couple of times and you're like, oh, I messed this painting up. It looks terrible. And then you stop. You've also stopped learning. So again, I'm going to harp on that. (laughs) If your painting already looks like garbage, because we all get to a phase where we're like, this looks like garbage. If you already feel like it looks like garbage, it can't get any worse. Do yourself a favor and just keep going. Just keep playing and trying to learn the techniques. And you might surprise yourself and pull the painting out at the end and be really happy with it. And you might not, but If you keep going, you're going to learn. If you stop, you are going to stop learning. A 
lots and lots of matte medium there. Just giving it a ghost of that highlight. Even more matte medium, very, very thin. I would say that some kind of a medium here is required because you want to be able to control the transparency and you cannot do that without it. But as always, you can use gloss medium, you can use glazing medium. You do not want to use gel, but if that's all you have, like I said, try it and see what happens. I, for me personally, I think gel would be hard because that adds a lot of texture, but maybe, maybe that would be exactly what you like. You don't know until you try it. But yeah, you want to use gloss, matte, or glazing medium to get that transparency. If you're just really good at mixing your colors, you know, maybe you don't need that. Maybe, maybe you're just good at mixing your colors so that you can get the highlight look without having to do glazing and overlays. Like I said, there's a million ways to do something. This is how I do it, but it doesn't mean it's the only way. It doesn't mean it's the right way. Oh, the painting that you guys were commenting on a few weeks ago. I really like the painting in the background. That was actually um, a, a kind of a version of this. It's definitely evolved from that to this, but that's where this kind of came from was, was from that. So if you liked that painting in the background of the flowers, here you go. <laughs> this one is for you. This color is almost straight buff. There's very little matte medium in it. I'm really punching the, the little bits of petal that I think are really interesting, that I want to really stand out. I'm putting this very bright color in just little places on it. Don't outline the entire petal. You're gonna just make it all white and uninteresting and flat. If you put it on bits, you're going to pull those bits closer to you. Whatever's brightest is going to be pulled toward the viewer. Whatever's a little bit darker is going to be pushed down just a bit. And that's going to keep a little bit of movement in your flower. So be very selective about where you put it. more matte medium we're gonna lighten it up because we're moving away from that central flower same color just much more transparent and applied in much fewer places scumble in some of that light stuff there and we'll glaze back over it for a suggestion of of petals
going back to my dark color here, my maroon and Payne's gray with some matte medium. I'm gonna start doing a little bit more glazing in the dark areas, starting with this main flower. One way to really make those highlights pop and seem very bright is to make the darks very dark. So I'm kind of taking this color and glazing down in the darkest parts of the flower to really make that seem very deep and very shadowed and give a lot more life to the highlights. Always remember, if your highlights aren't bright enough, it's because your darks aren't dark enough. And vice versa, if your darks aren't dark enough, it's because your lights aren't light enough. For some real drama, put the dark next to the light. Yeah, I thought I was going to start glazing the corners with this number three round and quickly decided that this was not the right brush for <laughs> large scale glazing. So I'm going to go to my Fuzzbert here in just a minute and I'm going to glaze that dark color over the rest of the canvas very, very thinly as I work toward that main flower. There we go, nice and dark up in these corners with Fuzzbert. More matte medium and a lighter touch as I move toward that brighter area. I like how that vignette kind of, kind of focuses your eye down to the center of that large flower. I really liked that. And that's not something that I had planned on doing. So when I got that idea for it and it was working out, I was really, really enjoying that. I added some more Payne's Gray and I'm really just putting this heavy dark mixture on these corners. Again, it just really helps force your eye down into that bright area. But by keeping it transparent, it does not obliterate everything under it. It just really tones it down and makes it seem very shadowed. And that's really all there is to this painting. I would like to say thank you so much to my awesome sponsor Fredericks. Without these canvas pads, I would I would go through so much expensive canvas. It's nice to be able to have these and cut them to whatever size I need for these kind of painting ex exercises. And thank you to all of you for watching and painting along. I hope to see you again very soon with another one. Don't forget to check out my website, paintingwithjane.com for brushes, books, paintings, and more information on each of these little videos. And I will see you next time.